You're welcome to our show, Flourishing Hub. So Flourishing Hub is a show centered around empowering young people with, you know, with the right mindset to thrive in today's world. You know, we're going to discuss things like strategy, things like planning, things like investing, you know, real estate, um, saving, to mention but a few. All this will be happening every Monday from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. So last Monday, we talked about real estate. We brought Mr. Sabit Habat here and we discussed real estate. And um, as a result of that conversation, many of you reached out to us with questions that we should follow up, you know, and we felt the need to bring him back on the show for him to discuss more on that. A lot of the questions were about condominiums. What are condominiums? Should someone invest in condominiums? What are the advantages and disadvantages of condominiums? You know, and we felt the need to make that the subject matter of today's conversation. So Herbert, you're welcome today. Thank you so much, Doreen. Um, I'm happy to be here once again and good evening viewers. You tickled our viewers. You know, you tickled. It seems many people have love real estate. You know, they want to, you, they, they look at real estate as a good source, as a good investment opportunity. Yes. And as a result, many really just kept coming in and coming in and coming in with questions. Thank you for honoring our invite and coming back. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. Let's start with this particular question. Someone asked, uh, this is uh, Bagheri Barnes on Twitter. They asked, um, would you recommend investing in real estate and what links could one use in their research on real estate investment? Thank you so much. Uh, like I mentioned last week, uh, real estate, especially land, is always cheaper today. And uh, when you check our population, by 2040, uh, our population will be above 75 million. But the land is not being created. It is a fixed asset. So if you invest uh, in real estate, uh, of course you will know that it is like a, a given. Your land is going to appreciate. If you invest in a property, it's going to appreciate. So yes, uh, to answer you, uh, what, what is his name? Bernice. Bernice. To yes. answer you, Bernice, uh, it is very important to invest in real estate. But like I mentioned last week, it depends on uh, the purpose of investment. Is it a short term or long term investment? If you want to, uh, to get money back in the short term, then there are, uh, you need to consider uh, very many factors like location, location, or where the utilities. But if you want to wait for a while, then anywhere you can buy land, uh, you, are, you, don't, you don't go wrong. So it is good and it is, it is inevitable that uh, everyone should invest in real estate. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, so Vanessa, please go ahead and buy yourself that property and do whatever you can to add value to it. Also, someone, uh, also she asked, what links would you recommend someone to use in their research on real estate investment? Oh, uh, in Uganda? In Uganda and abroad, because I mean, I think in this, uh, at this point she's, she's looking for information. Mm -hmm. Where can she get the right information mm -hmm. about real estate? Mm -hmm. And being the dot-com era, she's looking for links. Okay. <laughs> we have, uh, we have um, a body called Institute of, uh, of Surveyors of Uganda. Uh, where you can visit and get the information about real estate here in Uganda. But uh, there are other real estate play, uh, players in Uganda, like Night Frank, uh, Night Frank Uganda Limited. They normally give quarterly uh, uh, analysis and update about real estate uh, in Uganda. We have uh, Stanbic Properties Limited, headed by my friend uh, Sabit, uh, Sabit Spencer. They, also, they have also started giving us updates on real estate in Uganda. Also, my company, Ridgeline, uh, you can visit us on, on our website, uh, ridgelineuganda.com. You get uh, information about real estate in Uganda. So there are 
unfortunately the most of the information here in Uganda is about selling we are selling land we are selling uh, we are selling houses uh, so the content is not so much but uh, the links I've told you uh, Institute of Surveyors of Uganda Stanbic Properties Limited Night Flank Ridge Line uh, Bagin and Company Limited you can get information about real estate in Uganda but also like I mentioned you can always uh, 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 visit us and ask for those professionals I have mentioned uh, about real estate and they will give you information and uh, also uh, there is no much content uh, and that's why I am currently writing my second book uh, it is on real estate in Uganda so it is at 60 percent and I've mentioned this so that uh, you the public can uh, put him on pressure to finish it very fast so I'm writing about real estate in Uganda and it will be uh, here soon mm. you. so on top of links and websites and um all these other places they can find information. Yes, they can also find the information in books. Yes, please. Any particular books? Oh, yeah. You go to, for example, Land Economics at Fokarto, not Fokarto. Uh, it's College of Engineering and Design in Makere University, Rosso Chamboko University. You can go to the library and you get the information about real estate in Uganda. But also, I stock book uh, book bookshop. They have uh, some books about real estate, not, uh, unfortunately not in Uganda. I think, if I'm not wrong, having mm -hmm. seen a book about real estate in Uganda, mine is going to be a pioneer. <laughs> Unless a viewer here is going to, to jump in and write uh, and, uh, and publish it very fast, which is a very good thing because we need such a kind of books for our mm -hmm. flourishing youth to, to read. Uh, yes. uh, like I mentioned that real estate is the real thing, so uh, uh, people, experts out there, you need to give information to these younger people about real estate, so they don't know it. I, some time back I was, uh, I was giving uh, a, a lecture uh, in some organization here in Uganda, and I talked, basically I thought people know about uh, title search, about, about boundary opening, and they didn't know, mm -hmm. yet it's a corporate organization, corporate body. So it triggered me that I should actually write uh, about real estate in Uganda. So that such a kind of information is a fear for the public. But yeah, I, I like your focus. Uh, when you focus on real estate, I can guarantee you, my friend, you are going to prosper. <laughs> yeah. Also, I, personally, I'm looking forward to your book. We need, we need books on real estate but in the African context, exactly. particularly in the Ugandan context, exactly. you know, not not all, not everything applies for every country, yeah, sure. you know, because it really the context is different, so mm. please work hard at it, uh, the 40%, uh, well, that 40%, you <laughs> want it. <laughs> okay. Also, Herbert, mm. many asked about condominiums, yeah. now these were the majority and we decided to just, you know what, let's talk about condominiums. What are condominiums? Condominium. Uh, indeed, uh, there, is a, there is a friend of mine who, who, uh, who said that his uncle is, uh, has a, an engineer, a construction company, but he doesn't know about condominium. He wondered how an engineer doesn't know about, about condominium. Condominium, uh, normally called condo, is uh, I'm not going to give the specific definition because this is not an academic <laughs> paper. I'm not on. <laughs> You're not uh, an exam. Yes, yeah. But uh, condominium, uh, in a simple term, is a, 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 you have a big building with different units, like apartments. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you must be staying in an apartment, like an apartment where you own it. Uh, in, in, instead of owning, uh, instead of renting, it is yours. Oh, okay. So there is a whole building There's with a whole different, building. as the, with different apartments. Yes. But I can I can own my particular apartment. Exactly. Uh -huh. How you own it? Uh, the developer, for example, you have an acre of land, and he wants to to build uh, the condominium apartments. 
you you apply to Ministry of Lands and uh, you you there is there is what we call that condominium plans. You apply and give the condominium plans and they approve it and so you you take it there when you start building and then you sell. Instead of selling uh, just a portion of land, you subdivide land and you sell it, you are selling an apartment. Uh, like I mentioned, Doreen, uh, in Uganda we are still, uh, uh, we are still like our babies, or I don't know, between a change, or, yeah, because uh, it's like land is available, everyone, when he gets uh, a property, uh, a small piece of land, you want to put your car thing, your car thing. But when you go to other countries, that are uh, developed countries, you find actually there is what we call efficient utilization of land, because land is fixed, is scarce, mm -hmm. it's a scarce resource. So instead of going to Chanja and you put your bungalow, why can't you uh, build uh, vertically instead of horizontally? You, do, you build vertically and you share. You, uh, you share, one person owns, the, uh, owns an apartment, another one owns, I mean a unit, another one owns a unit. Now, in 2001, the government of Uganda introduced what we call condominium law. Yeah, condominium law, I can explain more about it. They approved that you can have a title, like the way you have land title, you can have a condominium title. So that apartment you are renting, you have your own certificate of title. I have my title for my <laughs> apartment to be. Yes, I have to be. <laughs> it's, they, they even uh, they give it a, a property number, uh -huh. a condominium property number. Mm. And you can uh, you can mortgage it. Remember, we talked about mortgage. Yes. You can take it to the bank and you get loans. You can sell it. And uh, by the way, if the apartment is big, you can apply. You can apply in means of lands to subdivide it. You can also subdivide the way you subdivide land. You can also subdivide uh, a condominium apartment. Interesting. So it is uh, an interesting, and uh, the public doesn't know more about uh, about this condominium but i would do i would do i would go for it i would go to to invest in a condominium especially in urbani uh, urban cities and urban setup rather than uh, wasting land building bungalows you rather build going uh, upwards and also is there a market for these condominiums in uganda like today as we we discuss this this whole condominium as we have this condominium conversation mm -hmm. let's try to bring it down mm -hmm. to the ugandan context yes. is there a market a for lot, condominium? We, we, we we want to pack our five cars a, a lot of in the compound parking <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. want mm -hmm. that bungalow to, for myself yes you know to show my social class mm -hmm. is there market? yes there is a lot of market uh, now these days if you go to uh, to chanja charwajara uh, uh, with Nadia, mm -hmm. you find you find their private uh, practice. Uh, uh, at first, it was only national housing and construction company that was uh, providing such a kind of apartments. But there are now uh, very many private players, and they are there because there is market. Mm -hmm. Actually, for your information, most people uh, they sell. Most people they they sell on plan. Someone you you have uh, produced a plan, and before you even start constructing, people are already booking, and they are already paying you money to uh, to book their own apartment before it is even constructed. That's what we call us uh, buying of plan. So the market is there, and most especially. There are people, uh, our, our good Ugandans who are living abroad, they like such a kind of, uh, of investments uh, because most uh, maybe they fear uh, the, the other risks mm -hmm. I told you, so they think that this is the, the right opportunity. But also because they are exposed out there, they know what it means to, uh, to buy an, an apartment. Uh, an advantage of uh, of of buying a 
residency department. Maybe before we go to that yes. advantage, because we are, I want you to give me mm. more on that. Mm. There are those that I have seen that are quite costly. Mm. You know, you, you look at, you know, just buying that apartment is like uh, some good money. Mm. You know, mm. what causes that that hike in price? Mm. What causes it? Okay. Uh, anything that is uh, variable is always expensive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but also, of course, in Uganda, yeah, like I mentioned, the, the interest rates in Uganda are high, and also the land values in Uganda, especially. Most people they like uh, they like uh, building condominiums near the main road, near the tarmac. Uh, because people have not yet have not yet appreciated their advantages, so you cannot an investor will not go inside the common go inside to, to put a, a condominium. Otherwise, he will not get he will not get uh, ready buyers. So they want where uh, the land. I mean the place that is already uh, developed. Yeah. So the land itself is expensive. And the interest rates in Uganda are very expensive, and you see the construction. There's a bag of cement is around thirty thousand, so the construction costs are expensive. And he also is an investor; he wants to get some uh, profit out of it. So that's what makes it uh, expensive. Okay. Uh, uh, but still, as it is expensive, uh, I have seen people who have bought. Uh, those apartments and they will sell them and they will sell them at a profit. It means the market is there. Mm. Yeah, the market is there for uh, apartments, for for condominium units. The market is there. You you buy at 300 uh, million and you find you are selling it at 500 million. You have already got your profit of 200 million. Mm. Not speculating, but the market is there if you buy the right property because sometimes uh, there are uh, those private uh, developers who just uh, they want to get a lot of uh, a lot of profit and they squeeze the uh, the the unit and you find that you don't have a space and people mm -hmm. you know Ugandan Africans we like space space yeah so if you buy the right property and uh, from the right developers uh, who have who who have integrity and they construct something that is going to last for long, then you don't go wrong. Mm. It's the right, uh, it's the right thing to do. From everything you've said, I kept hearing some advantages, 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 like pros mm. of having condominiums. Mm. So maybe you can just highlight some of them that are that stand out for you. What stands out for me is land is always fixed. Like I mentioned, over 75 million by 2040 will be in Uganda. God is not creating more land. Uh, unfortunately, we are encroaching uh, the the forest reserve, the swamp area. That's why we are encroaching because we are going to start fighting with with the, the nature, which is not good. So it's high time. Actually, I could also advise the government side time that we need to start at marketing. This area should only be apartments, this area should be uh, bungalows, this area. We should have a plant here. For example, I'm surprised uh, we are starting, uh, there are new cities that are coming up, but without specific plans. For example, if Mbarara has been made a city, before it was made a city, mm -hmm. you should say in this area, uh, in this in this area, we should have apartments. In this area, it should be with bungalows. In this area, so that we have an organized, uh, an organized city. But if we continue uh, building like this, we shall, we shall not have, we shall not have people. People will not uh, have where to live. So, uh, to me, I think now it's high time we we go uh, we we develop uh, vertically. Uh, in, 2018, I was in I was in Egypt. I went to Cairo. I got shocked that in Cairo, uh, 30 million people stay in Cairo stay. 30 million. It's almost a fraction of Uganda. They are staying in Cairo city. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? This 
the apartments in the condominium. They, are, they, they planned very well and they are staying in those apartments. So some areas, for example, every time I see Chevando, I see Mulago, I see Kamocha, those I see here Kasubi, those areas should be uh, quite, uh, building upwards. They should be apartments, apartments, so that we have uh, where people to, to stay. The only that problem would, uh, you would be sending out so many a number of people. Mm -hmm. You'd be sending them out of the city. Of course, <laughs> sending out <laughs> because of price. Yeah, I normally tell people there are some people who who have land. Mm -hmm. There are some people who have land. Uh, maybe they are native. Uh, they are native here, but they don't have money to develop. Partner with people who have land. Partner with private developers who have land. I mean, who have money. money. Then you share. You last week we talked about having one percent of a bigger thing, yes. rather than having one hundred percent of a very small thing. thing. I would rather instead of having uh, 25 decimals in a chair window, uh, with only my small house, I would rather demolish it, enter in memor into memorandum of understanding with a private developer and we build a uh, four-story building, condominium building. I have my good apartment there, another apartment I'm renting it out, and another uh, other apartments I give it to the private developer so that we it is a collaboration <clears throat> I see oh, yeah, I see some organization like mm -hmm. church uh, like Church of Uganda uh, it has uh, a lot of land a lot of land in a very good location but what are we using it for it which they can partner with private uh, church members they are there there are people who have money out there can partner with them, develop condominium, get your part, and the developers also get their profit. Uh, I don't know why in Uganda and in Africa we are so individualistic. Is that the word? Individualistic. Yes, individualistic. Like you want to every, everything, it's yours. I think I mentioned one time that you, you even start a company and you start stealing because you start stealing from your own company because you have it with another another partner. You start stealing. Let's get out of the uh, being so selfish and let's go and develop and grow together. But what yeah. causes that? What causes that individualism? I don't know because uh, in African tradition, we when I, when I was growing up, we mm -hmm. used to sit outside and we we share so food. It was community based. Yes, community based. We mm -hmm. share food. We sometimes actually we take it to the neighbors. They also bring food and yes. also we eat together. I don't know what has happened now. Maybe uh, the big globalization. Globalization has cropped in here in Uganda, mm -hmm. and uh, those people who are now uh, growing up, they think that uh, I can own, I can own, I can own. Also greedy. Mm. You want to own this, you want to own this, you want to own this. I, I wonder why some people, they have uh, 20, 40 hectares, 100 hectares, you know hectares, that is over 200 acres of land. But you continue grabbing, you continue uh, stealing people's land, or you continue buying, buying. Why? You know when you buy all that? If I don't take it, other people will, so I'd rather take. So, so what? Because you have over 100 acres, you have 300 acres of land, and you are affecting people, uh, you are affecting people who would want to buy land, they can't buy, and you, because you are rich, you have money, I don't know whether you have got you it. You talk to them, just eh? tell them. I don't know whether you, where you have got it, yes, even if you have got it in a, in a, good, in a good way, but share, <laughs> share the land, uh, be, be so humble, because tomorrow you are not going to be here. Please. Would there also be illiteracy? Like, for example, people are not. You earlier, right now, you just said, um, if I had, if I have my small land, my land in Chevando, yeah, I can get in partnership with someone mm. who has the finances to yeah, develop right. the area, mm. and both of us benefit. Mm. 
you know. So you find that some of that information, our people don't have this information. Yes, see. I think that's why. So I'm illiteracy can also be a <laughs> contributing factor. So for you stay in your slum, in your small kafunda, mm. yet you have an asset, but you haven't realized yet mm. how you can actually, how it can work for you. Mm. Maybe also this information, you see we are speaking in English. Which is why we, uh -huh. <laughs> we, we take it from Uganda. So we can take it from Uganda. Ah, we can take it from Uganda. We are speaking in uh, English, but I have approached, mm. uh, we have at Ridgeline, we have approached uh, different individuals. You know, changing a mindset is so hard, it's so very difficult. You go and explain to him or her, and he says, huh? Michael land, you want to steal my land? Yes, <laughs> want to steal. And you know what? How bad people have stolen Paul's land. Mm. So if you people who go in your suits, we're going to buy maybe Next time we shall go in our t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> you first of all, you really look them. like them. Mm -hmm. you first look like them. And then, you know, explain these things to them. Because, again, some of them are so you know. So, you explaining it, you, you just need to Explain it the best way they can understand Maybe it. that's also the, the local authorities like KCCA yes. mm -hmm. and government should come in and have this kind of education uh, to they have this kind of education to the masses so that by the way there are some there are some people for example in the, in slum areas whom you can redirect and the problem is you want to come and push them away. You don't have a plan B. Where, to, where, to, where will they go? Uh, get a plan where to put them and build. Mm -hmm. Those who have land, uh, like, uh, but of course they will not trust you because you chase them at Nakawa. <laughs> you chase them at Nakawa and they, you tell them you are going to, uh, you are going to build and give them a portion of investment. Now, how many years? Uh, there, nothing has happened, so they will not trust you. Maybe that's why the the private partners can come in and and help. But local authorities, the government can educate and really try to. Let's, uh, for example, in Dubai, in Dubai they plan the city for up to two thousand two thousand. Is it two thousand one hundred? Two thousand one hundred. And they did that plan in 1985. Mm. They planned for 2,100. But here, every time, I, every time you wake up, you find it, there is a tarmac, and tomorrow they have dug that tarmac. They have demolished that tarmac, and they are putting a wire, some some cables. <laughs> you, go, you, go to come, you go to come watch. You go to come watch. You go to come You find today someone has demolished the tarmac. And I've put a, a cable. Tomorrow, someone else comes with another cable, and they put it there. Really? That's what really matter. Can I can I have <laughs> tea and then I put sugar? Eh, you know. Now so, it. Swale ko, swale ko. Swale ko. Eh? No. <laughs> Let's yeah. come back and come how we need to swale ko as a people <laughs> and uh, as a government. Mm. But yes, mm. see you in a bit. With 200 million people aged between 15 and 24, Africa has the youngest population in the world. This can either be an opportunity or a ticking time bomb. At Young and Flourishing Hub, we seek to turn these numbers into an opportunity for Africa to become a global leader. Join us every Monday from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. only on Church of Uganda Family TV as we take you through the discussion of different topics that will enable you to become world-class leaders and mentors, grow your finances, and become world-class innovators. Young and Flourishing, Transforming Africa. Thank you for sticking with us. 
the conversation was so interesting, Herbert. You know, he was still telling us how we, as as you, Uganda, as a country, we don't have, we are not organized, especially as. You know, as we do our construction, infrastructure development. Infrastructure development yes, thank mm. you. Mm. Um, you know, mjakolo lugudo, you tamak it, and then two years down the road, or even just a few months down the road, you want to demolish it because you have to pass the wire, mm. and then you can just imagine the wastage of resources there. Mm. You know, it just reminded me how you know there is a joke we usually make at home of you know some people just do things in the reverse. Mm -hmm. You have to, to take water and then put sugar <laughs> yeah? instead of just making your kachai well and you mm -hmm. enjoy your tea very well. Mm -hmm. Yes, but how about? Mm -hmm. Agamba, yes. HTSA to Chirunji. Condominiums, it's good. I have my land. Mm -hmm. If you have your money, mm -hmm. you yes, come develop it, let's both benefit. Mm -hmm. But they are scared mm -hmm. because you, the corporate class, Mm -hmm. yes. You come in those big documents of yours, Mudimunga clause in Gazimaker, where maybe after a certain period of time he's going to lose his benefits mm -hmm. on this, you know, on that whole uh, arrangement. arrangement mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. because you people are learned, you're educated, you have expensive lawyers and intelligent lawyers, so mm -hmm. you will win. Mm -hmm. You know, so as a result of that, they would rather stay with their small house, their their land, mm -hmm. and leave it there. At least they are, they are sure it is theirs. Mm -hmm. But once they involve you people, mm -hmm. the corporate, mm -hmm. then their fate is not certain. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. what can you say about that? Yeah, I think uh, I don't agree with you, and. Uh, I don't think that you haven't had so, such cases, have it? I haven't had, <laughs> but uh, uh, yes, of course, there are many fraud stars in the market mm. and that affect uh, uh, affect uh, our real estate investment and business. Like they say, everyone is a real estate broker. So if someone out there uh, steals your car money, you think that all brokers are bad, all uh, real estate agents are bad. Uh, I normally, I, I, I'm also a fan of social media by the way. Some lady asked here, uh, some lady asked here, uh, all men are like that. So I, 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 I asked her on social media, I replied, uh, uh, how, how did you get time to date all those men? <laughs> to date all men? You can't say everyone is bad. So yes, there are people who can come and uh, and they have their selfish agendas, like I mentioned. But there are other people, uh, private developers, who are uh, who come to to make sure that he, it's a win-win situation. But are there, are there maybe government laws that can protect Omotua Wansi? Of course, they are. They are there, like you have said. I, it depends, like that uh, that judge. Uh, she has the uh, bajukuru. Eh? She can, uh, those who are uh, already educated, can come and get a lawyer and also explain to them very well about the laws. For example, on a condominium, when you build an apartment, uh, when you build an apartment and you have all submitted uh, the condominium plans after that land title is, is surrendered, the Ministry of Plans, it's no longer your land title because there are many different uh, uh, titles. Shareholders. Uh, yeah, they are shareholders in, in, the, in the development. So the land is not yours, it has been surrendered. So those, uh, those small uh, titles, those units have titles. That's what you, that's what you have. Mm. Yeah. So, <laughs> I feel like as we kept having this conversation, we kept address, addressing um, the good and the bad mm -hmm. of condominium. Yes. Are there any specific uh, disadvantages, you know, with you know investing in condominiums that you would want to highlight? The the disadvantages. How can I'm always uh, I am always campaigning that people should go condominium. 
then we will ask him the disadvantages. Anyway, there are people who want... <laughs> because who, there is nothing that is just... There, there are people who want space. Uh, you have, you know, in Uganda, uh -huh. you, you, have, you have your... Parking area. Your parking area. And uh, you have visitors who, uh, who have come and you know where to park. So those are disadvantages. How do you mitigate that? How do you mitigate that? Uh, we we normally encourage the real estate uh, developers when they are developing to have another area of uh, a, an extension of bigger parking area. Now I I think Ugandans should do, should do, take it as a must. It is a change that is coming. By the way, I realized that. We are building, they call them permanent houses. Those permanent houses are not permanent. Our children are going to come and demolish, and demolish them. Violence. Yes. yes. <laughs> People are, the children, our children are going to come and demolish because that, those are apartments that, we, I mean, those bungalows we are building would not make sense for them. So in the future, they are going to demolish. You rather now start now building uh, apartments uh, because land is going to be scarce and scarce and scarce because of the population that is, incre is increasing day and night. So I, I think I think to fellow Ugandans, if you have a very good land in a very good location, please go up and build vertically. Now also you Ugandans who think that you should stay near the road, I think private practitioners, if you give them, if you give them their their assurance that if I build in in Nansana inside there, I build an apartment, condominium apartment, people will come to buy them. Then mm -hmm. people can go and buy, and and the, the, the private developers will go there and and construct. Or even you go to Chiwenda and you you build apartments, but because people think that those condominiums uh, should be near town. Who told you that everyone should be staying in, in town? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why should you Why should you stay in town if all the utilities, if all the schools and what are, are constructed that side? Then go and stay that side. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and this uh, COVID nineteen situation has taught us that you can actually even have an office in a, at home, so you don't need uh, you come in town once in a while. Uh, after I had gone back to from Kampala to the village, it took me ages to, come, to go back to town. <laughs> Maybe after uh, when I, I, I went to secondary school and it was like I went to St. Mary's College of and the only senior in South Sahara, north of Lipopo. And that's where I started again going back to town. So there is time when you will find actually if I have a service I'm offering, I just use my 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 computer and I remain at home. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to always be at uh, in the town, in your town. Maybe th those foreigners, especially uh, the Asians, they like staying in the town uh, uh, near near their workplace. But now uh, the officers can be at their home. So in Chiwenda, in 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 Chiwenda, in Gayaza, in Kasanga, to where I stay, People, you start building up. If they don't buy the the apartments, you come and uh, you and, buy and you prison me. <laughs> but people that are going to is. yeah, people are going to start uh, uh, buying those apartments. Uh, and I also request, I also request the banks. When a private developer comes to you, at least you see he's doing uh, he's doing something that is very important. For your, uh, for your future customers, please give them, uh, give them at low interest rate because uh, that private developer is like a government. He wants to connect power, he wants to connect uh, water, he uh, is putting loads, he is what the, the work of the government. So if he has come to you, you negotiate and give them at this grace period. I know you guys, you make profits. Uh, a lot of profits. Why can't you? Uh, why can't you say for for this time, uh, let's uh, let's support this real estate sector. Uh, for example, how, housing finance bank. 
housing finance bank started to finance housing. Yeah? Now, but they are they are they they are inverted. Yes, they are still uh, uh, one of the best uh, banks that finance uh, real estate. But they went into other kind of business. They diversified. They, they, they diversified. Yes, they were right. But <laughs> they went to many but please. Uh, banks reduce on the interest rates and, uh, and help the private developers to, to build uh, those apartments. For those just joining us, this is Flourishing Hub, which is a show centered around really empowering people with the right mindset, you know, with, with also different ideas that can help you flourish and be the best version of yourself. You know, and we do this through the different conversations we have on the show. Today we've been discussing condominiums, what they are, advantages, disadvantages, and just before we broke off, Sabet was taking us through the disadvantages of condominiums. Yes, Sabet, proceed. Yeah, disadvantages, other disadvantages like uh, uh, the children uh, playing the area mm -hmm. could be uh, compromised. But most people now, the apartments, they have a, a common a, a common ground where people can, can play. But we used to live communally. This condominium is like commun uh, communal, uh, communal living. Next time maybe we'll talk about also gated communities. Uh, because we need them. We need gated communities. We need to really to organize our, our, our cities. Yeah. yeah. And uh, most people, like I normally talk to them about uh, a condominium, they have very many questions to ask me. Uh, someone asked me, but now the, you are telling me that I will, uh, I will have a title of my apartment, of my unit. What about the staircases, what about the parking? I was about to ask you, <laughs> what stairs? Yes. <laughs> are they? yes, the staircases and the, the parking, so we call it... Even like Ascari's house? Yeah. Uh -huh. So we call we call that common areas. Okay. Common areas where they are used by everyone. When you are entering the apartment, uh, the person is also entering in his or her apartment. Uh, the parking, uh, the security. So for those, no one has ownership. Now, uh, the condominium law of two thousand and one states that you, when, when you buy. Uh, you, you are like, let's say, a hundred people, you have bought those units, you form a company, a corporation, a company. Now, in the company, each person who has a unit, you, each person that has a unit has an equal shares. For example, if you have like three units, uh, so you have like three shares in the company. So that company is is responsible for managing the common areas and is responsible for maintenance of the apartments because me as a private developer when i when i develop an apartment and i sell to you I, before before 60 percent of the occupants are bought it's me managing uh, managing the, the, the premises the, the premises but after sixty percent have bought, so I let you start managing, start managing your your apartments, your premises. So who pays, who pays the the ascari, who pays the garbage collection, who pays the twister for for the for the compound, uh, security lights, uh, who pays for that? So they form a company, a corporation. <coughs> And individual owners, they contribute, they pay, they pay to that company, and the company does the management. You try and you give accountability to to the owners. So in that company, actually, they even elect, uh, they select the board, the board of governors, board of directors that are going to oversee the operations of the company. So the. Uh, the individual owners they can uh, say they, they say every month we are contributing a hundred thousand we are contributing two hundred thousand so in that money to be used for paying security used for painting the outside used for 
yeah, for many other work for, for management of the premises. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So from what I'm hearing you say, it's like condominiums are the future. Yes. You know, they are the future they because are. our population is growing, land is not increasing. Yes. Like we're not getting land from heaven, no. Yes. But our population is increasing. Mm -hmm. So you'll find that condominiums building vertically is going to become the new normal and if perhaps it's high time for you to change now because if you don't change now change will change you it's inevitable i said the, the children will demolish <laughs> the children will demolish <laughs> yes you said that earlier yes. yeah so it's perhaps it's best you do it now and start benefiting now from it and expand your horizons mm -hmm. yes so do you have condominiums yourself <laughs> is that is that something you've invested in? You are you are asking me am I a do? motivational speaker or <laughs> you uh, want to know at are these things practical for you? Are you doing them? Uh, at at Rich Line we we are we are helping people, we are helping people to 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 build. We are doing what we call feasibility study market research and feasibility study about such a kind of investments and of course uh, uh, we have to we have to to be exemplary so it means in the future our plan our long term investment uh, plan is that we are going to also build our condominium uh, apartments as rich line uh, we shall be having rich line towers but also, like I mentioned, uh, part of the projects for young and flourishing is condominium uh, apartments and condominium offices. Uh, but I never told you about uh, condominium offices because most people, uh, most people think that condominium. Those who, those few people who know about condominium, mm. they think condominium is only for uh, houses, for living houses, in. Uh, apartments, living in. Uh, my master's research. My master's research, I did research on office condominium and out of 175 uh, tenants I interviewed, uh, 120 uh, say that given a chance they can buy office condominium rather than keep paying rent. So what is office condominium? Like I mentioned about uh, uh, residential condominium apartments, the same, you have your uh, you have Simbe in town? Yeah, the Simbe in town. Then you have your square meters. Your square meters, that's your office, and you get the title for, for that particular uh, office. So it's also an apartment, but in the form of office. office. So <clears throat> in Uganda, uh, many developers, I don't, uh, in my research, I found out that the developers that uh, are not interested in the uh, office condominium because they have money they have money and uh, rent uh, uh, earning from rent is better than uh, selling and, and getting out of of, uh, of their investment but you see also people they have so much attachment when I when I own something I want to remain with it there is uh, someone um, part of my client whom I advise say, but this land is mine. If uh, maybe if someone can, if someone can uh, buy, I, I mean the private developer can develop and uh, and rent out the premises. Then after ten years, he give he give me back my property. So I asked them, I I asked them, do you think uh, there is any de private developer who wants to? keep his money for 10 years. We, for them, they want to to develop, invest, get back their profit, and go and do other projects. They, yeah. they, they will not wait for you for 10 years. So most uh, uh, most developers are not uh, selling, I mean, are not selling office condominium. Maybe because, maybe because they think uh, the rent, uh, monthly rent, can earn much more than more. More, more than uh, saying that once a year I have gone. Yes. But if you are if you are a serious uh, private developer, I would encourage you uh, to consider uh, office condominium, especially here in the in the town. All the, the, the centers, mm. all, all the centers in Barara, in, in 
Jinja, in the Kampala, in the Guru, in inside in, in the town, rather than uh, constructing uh, for rent, you can construct and sell it to different tenants, and you where you get your money, go and develop somewhere. You get your money, go and develop somewhere. You get your money, and someone will ask me, and so what? <laughs> After getting money, and so what? Go and transform Africa. Yeah. It's many more but anyway, just. In, in, in one minute, mm. just tell our viewers something, just give them that final message. Oh, the message is that uh, real estate is real and uh, there is a lot of information. Uh, the good thing I'm writing uh, all this I'm giving you now, I'm putting it in a book. But uh, you know, Ugandans, please uh, always read books. There are many books out there. There is a lot of information on the internet on real estate. I'm always here to, and I'm glad that I can be called back to discuss about real estate because everyone should flourish in real estate. Thank you. Thank you, Herbert. And he kept mentioning that right now we need to start thinking of building vertically. Yes. So perhaps we'll call you back and you tell us about airspace. Because <laughs> I've heard some yeah. countries are buying airspace. Like mm. for you, you just buy on top of me like this. Exactly. Yeah? yeah. So you can see how the, it's inevitable. It's it's inevitable where we are going. It's inevitable. Mm -hmm. You know, now, it's now there's going to be uh, uh, land titles in the air. Land titles in the air, and yeah. some countries are already doing that. Mm -hmm. So where we are going, mm -hmm. that kind of you know building vertically is inevitable. So you may want to rethink your home plan. That big compound or that small compound. How best can it work for you? How can it serve you? How can it put money in your pocket? Having land in itself doesn't make it an asset. But is it going to put money in your pocket? An asset is something that puts money in your pocket, exactly. while a liability is something that takes money out of your pocket. So if you have that big land, but it's not putting money in your pocket, perhaps you need to ask yourself, is this, what can I do for it to work for me? You know, before I die and my children utilize <laughs> utilize it better. Yet I'm sweated for read. Yet I sweated for read. But yes, thank you for staying with us. Thank you for learning and calling all you all your friends and family to watch us every Monday from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. This is Flourishing Hub. Stay tuned. the debt of church house and I want to invite you to give generously to the love gift. May God bless you as you give.